Hello, welcome back to Trico's YouTube channel. Today we're discussing the setup and operation of the direct reading Faragraph, also known as the DR7. All right, so we unbox the DR7. You can see it's the unit itself. Then it comes with the power cord, with the way speaker, the vial holder, then the user manual, and the calibration sheet from the factory. Uh, the DR7 is for particulate matter. Basically, you pass oil from the vial through the sensors and it reads the large and small particles and then puts a numeric value to the 10 micron and the 5 micron particles that it reads. Today, we're going to talk about how to assemble it and how to use it. Uh, the first step for assembly is to take the vial holder and attach it to the top of the unit. There's two Phillips head screws there that need to get loosened with the screwdriver. We're then tightening the screws to hold the vial holder in place. All right, so now we attach the vial holder to the unit. Now we take the waste beaker, place it in the receptacle. That'll hold the waste oil from when the unit's completed running, the waste oil goes there. So after it's full, you can empty it out. Once those are in the unit, the next thing you do is you turn around the unit and look at the power receptacle, and you take the power cord and attach it into the power receptacle. Then we will plug in the unit to power it up. Before we power the unit on, I want to discuss different items on the DR7 and what they are and cover the nomenclature that is involved in the instruction manual. Starting on the back of the unit, depending on your model, you have between two and four USB ports. This is to retrieve data or to hook up an external keyboard or mouse. Next, we have a CAD5 connection that if you want to connect your unit to the internet or to your network, that is what that's for. Then we have the on-off switch, that turns the unit on and off. I also covered, but talked about the power input. And lastly is the Windows serial key, which is either Windows 7 or current model edition is Windows 10. Now on the front of the unit, we have the vial holder, we have the end of oil sensor, the tube holding assembly, the sensor cable, the optics assembly, below the optics assembly is the magnet assembly, then we have the LCD touchscreen, and the waste beaker. Additionally, there's the left bulkhead and the right bulkhead. Now, when we turn the unit on, you'll notice the red Trico logo will illuminate and then the screen will start up and the Trico DR program will automatically load. Now, once the unit is fully turned on, you will see the home screen of the DR7 program. You'll note the waiting for oil. Now I'll talk about the different tabs on the top of the screen and what each button functions for. If you touch the menu, your option is to turn the beep on and off for every input, to select whether or not you want a control number, you have the option of yes or no, and to adjust the pump revolutions on the peristolic pump. You also have the option to exit the DR program. If you select the exit program, it closes the program. Then normally to start the program back up, there's a icon that you double touch and then the program restarts. Now back on the home screen, we have the run DR tab, which you can run standard, opaque, or simply pump. If you select pump, it then pumps fluid through and it helps drain if it needs to be drained. If you select opaque, you run it opaque if you select standard, you run it as a standard run. The next option is the charting option. This will generate the graphs of your DL and DS numbers. The next one is for calibration purposes on the baseline, if you need to adjust your baseline. Next is the calibration tab, where you have the options to adjust the optics, which then you have the calibration help, which will direct you to the manual, the alignment, which then you can align with the machine, or the calibrate to calibrate the machine. Next is the end of oil sensor, which then adjusts the threshold on the end of oil sensor where it reads your meniscus when it tells the unit's complete. The help tab 
is a copy of the DR7 instruction manual. The About tab gives Trico information if you need to contact us for any issues, the unit serial number, the unit model, and the version of software that you are currently running. This information is needed if there's any troubleshooting. Now before you start running any samples, you need a waste hose that connects the right bulkhead into the waste deposit. All you do is attach the hose to the hose barb and make sure the hose runs into the waste beaker. To run the DR7 unit, we need a vial with oil as an oil sample and a precipitator tube. Both of these are not included, nor the oil with the DR7 purchase. Those are separate add-on items that are disposable and are only supposed to be used once per oil sample. To prepare this oil sample, we took an oil from our oil analysis lab, took one milliliter of the oil with two milliliters of heptane. Before we took the one milliliter sample of oil, we warmed it to the correct temperature and shook the oil vigorously to evenly dispense the particles throughout the oil. We used a pipette dispenser with a pipette tip and placed it into the oil, drew one milliliter of the oil out, placed it into the sample vial. Then we had our heptane dispenser already set up for two milliliters and then dispensed two milliliters of heptane into the oil. Then we shook the oil and heptane mixture to obtain our oil sample. Now we're gonna set up the DR7 to take our first sample. As a note, I am doing this for demonstration purposes only in this video. When handling chemicals, please follow your company's PPE procedure. Now the first step is to attach the precipitator tube to the left bulkhead and underneath the delivery arm above the magnet assembly. So the precipitator tube will get connected to the left bulkhead. Then you will lift the delivery arm and get the tube underneath it and then close it to make sure the delivery arm is closed and the precipitator tube is above the magnet assembly. Now we take our sample vial and place it into the vial holder. Next we take the tube, run it through the tube holder, then through the end of oil sensor, not crimping the tube when you close the door, then up the vial holder into the vial, and then use the spring on the vial holder to hold the tube in place so it is on the bottom of the vial and the end of the oil sample. Now when we're ready to run the sample, we're at the home screen. We press standard and then if you need to enter a control number, it'll prompt you for it, otherwise you press start. The unit then pumps and pulls the oil from the oil sample up the tube, down through the end of oil sensor, through the tube holder, over the magnet assembly, and then into the peristaltic pump and then out through the waste into the waste beaker. As you can see, now it's waiting on the end of oil sensor. The unit is reading the DL and DS values, the large and small particles inside the oil. You can see the oil is traveling slowly through. A normal sample takes anywhere from a minute to five minutes depending on the viscosity of the fluid. When the unit is through the sample, the meniscus will travel up the tube through the end of oil sensor, triggering the unit that the sample is complete, then it will pump the remaining fluid through and it will say the oil is at the end. Now the unit is complete. It says done, waiting for start for the next oil sample. You can see we had a very clean fluid with a low DL and a very low DS. Now that the unit has finished running a sample, we remove the precipitator tube from the optics block and the end of oil sensor and throw it away as well as the sample vial. We do not want to reuse the precipitator tubes or the sample vial because of the cross-contamination. Now to remove the precipitator tube, it's the same way. We remove the hose from the left bulkhead assembly by pulling gently, lifting the delivery arm, removing it, taking the door apart from the end of oil sensor, unwinding it, and taking the whole entire assemblies and throwing them away.
Now that the sample has finished, the data is either recorded by hand and or it is stored on a CSV file on the unit itself. That is what either the USB ports or the CAD5 network connection is used for, to find the data in the CSV file and export it. That's additionally why the control number would be used. So you don't have the same control number for different data sets. Now to get to the CSV file with all the data, you exit the Trico program. So you bring up the start menu, open the C drive, go to the program files, then open the Trico folder, go to the DR program folder, in the DR data folder is where the CSV file is stored. So then you can see that it's right there. To note, you can make a shortcut on your desktop to find that folder easily. Then it goes right to the DR data folder where the CSV file is located. To shut down the unit, we exit the Trico DR program and double click the shutdown icon. Then the unit shut down. Once it completely is shut down, you turn off the power switch in the back. You know the power is off when the Trico logo is no longer illuminated. So that wraps up how to set up and operate a DR7. If you have any questions, please consult the user manual or leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.